Hey everyone, I'm Jordy, and here are 10 tips to help you get through your first Sunwell Plateau Clear. Some of these you may have heard of, some you probably haven't, but if you come away from this video with anything to add to your toolkit week one, do me a favor and hit those buttons down below. It helps me a lot. I've also got detailed boss guides for every encounter in the raid, so check those out for more information. All right, tip number one. On Calicos, make sure that you wait until Sathravar stuns and knocks down the humanoid Calicos before you taunt the demon. This can cut a lot of your damage taken and make for a smoother transition for your healers. Okay, tip number two, and this is Alliance only, bring your bag of marbles for Brutalis. Your shamans likely never did the quest and using them during the stomp can really help mitigate a lot of the damage he does. Third, Gnomish cloaking device. Many of us are engineering and if you are and haven't made this trinket, you definitely should. This enables you to completely fizzle the Conflagration cast on the Eridar Twins if she's targeting you with Conflagration. Just pop it during the cast and you vanish. Super helpful. Fourth, keep your Soul Stones on the tanks. Remember that most of the enemies in Sunwell Plateau are tauntable, so keeping a Soul Stone can salvage a bad pull if you're quick about it. Remember when the tank dies and then they take the Soul Stone, they need buffs as soon as possible to get back into the action. And since there are teleporters that get you close to the bosses after a wipe anyways, wipe recovery isn't that big a deal. Number five, on Fell Mist, remember that you can bubble and cloak encapsulate, but you can also DI someone who gets it to eliminate the raid damage. Now this obviously isn't a perfect strategy as you lose a pallet in this way, but with some efficient soul stones or battle reses, you can make good use of DI and help prevent further deaths. All right, sixth, on Muru, Threat from the various adds that spawn can be a problem for your tanks because as they run in, healers are continuously pumping heals. Priests, however, can pre-fade, which reduces their current threat by 1500, and this can go negative. So if you fade before the adds spawn and then continue casting, you've given your tanks a small buffer to secure them. Also on Muru, crafty engineers can use frost grenades to freeze the small void walkers that the void sentinels spawn when they die in place for your warlocks to get a better setup on their seeds of corruption this is a small trick that's actually surprisingly effective at clearing these ads up all right tip number eight remember that swapping healers into your shadow priest groups is a thing Healer man up to this point hasn't been too much of a concern, except maybe on council, but remember you can swap healers in and out of the Shadow Priest group to help them regen some mana if they're tapped. Having a DPS player with an easier rotation to manage this can be helpful. Just keep comms clear and let the raid know that you're making the swap. All right, number nine, on Kill Jaden, remember he's casting a majority of the fight, so he can't dodge or parry. As such, it's not so big a deal if you're melee and you're stuck attacking his front. Don't grief the raid by being too close to someone with Fire Bloom in order to be behind the boss. It's not actually increasing your DPS by all that much, and just requires the healers to do more work to keep you up. Expertise also has a lower value in this fight subsequently. And finally, number 10, on Kill Jaden, if you're quick about it, you can stack, buff the raid with haste, and then respread between the Darkness of a Thousand Souls casts. This really increases your raid's DPS, lowers damage taken, and speeds up the encounter tremendously. All right, well, that's it. If you've got any good tips for Sunwell Plateau, let me know in the comments. Good luck next week in all your raids, and see you guys in the next one.